Good evening, everybody. I just found the keys to the city. The beats are big and the lights are pretty. So why can't we get to the busy where the dreams are in the sky? You got me high, you got me high. I'm wonders and why. You got me high, you got me high. I think I might die. I'm face to face with the mirror. I've never felt so one with another. So why? Getting started, you're gonna need a standard sewing machine, and we're gonna be using a Singer Heavy Duty. You're gonna need fabric, and I recommend using a duck canvas, a soft twill, or denim. And you're only gonna need about a half a yard. A closure for the back, and bias tape or a bias tape kit. Either one will work. You'll need a sweatband and you can either buy this or make this. I highly recommend buying it and they're available at kevsupplyco.com. And also you're gonna need a size strip. And lastly, you're gonna need your pattern and this pattern is available at properfitclothing.com and all you have to do is download it and print it out. getting started you're gonna to want to go ahead and lay your panels out on your fabric trace them and cut them out and you're gonna to want to end up with two top panels two side panels one front panel and one roll panel Next, we're going to add interfacing to the front panel. You don't have to do this if you don't want to, but we're just going to show you this. It's going to add a little more structure to that front panel. Like any other five panel you see in the store, they're going to have this. And this is also available at capsupplyco.com. But all you have to do is iron it on and then cut it out and you're good to go. Take your two top panels, place right sides together and stitch across the top. And you're going to want to do a quarter inch seam allowance. Now we're gonna be showing you how to set up your twin needle. And this is super simple. Just install like a normal needle, set your machine to zigzag with zero width, and thread two spools of thread the same exact way. We're going to show you two different options for adding on your bias tape and these are just two different bias tape folders the one on the right is just one you can get at any hobby store and the one on the left is available at capsupplyco.com we are going to be using the one on the left just because it's a little bit easier for us to use and we've been using it for a while but honestly they both do the same thing so use whatever you're comfortable with we would follow every toast with a song and Whatever one you're using, line it up with your presser foot and then just tape it right on your machine. You definitely are going to want to make sure this is secure so that way nothing's moving around when you're sewing on that bias tape. Now all you have to do is cut your bias tape to the measurement of the folder and you're ready to start sewing. So go ahead and take those two top panels and what you're going to want to do is feed it through that center seam. And this is going to cover up the raw edge on the inside and also give you a nice top stitch on the outside. Take your front panel and take your top panels, place right sides together and just sew that top edge.
we're gonna show you another option for adding the bias tape and this is for if you want to really get into cap making and take your game to the next level we're using a double needle sewing machine and also the attachment but if you're only looking to make one cap then it's totally cool just to use a regular domestic machine with a twin needle next we're gonna go ahead and add the bias tape to that front seam and again, you don't need this machine for this step. You can totally do it the same way as you did the top two panels with the twin needle. Go ahead and grab a side panel and we're gonna sew it onto the side of the top and the front panel. And what we're gonna do is work around that curve. So start at the front and just go slow all the way around that curve. And then go ahead and repeat this process for the other side. That's an interesting twist. Mm. And then once you have both of your side panels on, go ahead and add your bias tape to both of those seams. And there you have it, the outside is nice and top stitched and the inside, all the seams are covered and looks really professional. The next step we'll be covering that raw edge up on the back opening and there's multiple ways of doing this. The first one is just buying bias tape. It's a double folded bias tape and you just lay it over the edge and sew it on. The only downside to using this is that you're limited on color. The other option is to use a bias tape making kit and this is where you pretty much just make your own bias tape. And it comes with a presser foot that helps you attach the bias tape to your garment. And it's pretty simple to use, all you have to do is cut a strip, feed it through and iron it and after that it works the same as the bias tape, you just fold it over and sew it on or you use that attachment. So we're going to be using a double fold bias tape binder to clean up those edges and you can definitely get these for domestic sewing machines too. We're going to have links in the description. So go ahead and cut out long pieces of bias tape that are the right measurements to the width of your binder. And you're going to want to feed that bias tape into your binder and get it started. And this is what it kind of looks like and that's going to go around the entire edge. And this setup is definitely more for if you're doing a lot of hats but I highly recommend getting one of these because it makes your life a lot easier and you can use it for so many different applications. Now we're gonna be adding the side strip and this goes on the bottom of the inside and just sew it all the way around. And this side strip kinda of helps keep structure at the bottom and also gives you a reference point for when you're sewing on the sweatband and the roll. Next, go ahead and grab your roll panel and fold it with right sides together and we're gonna sew just the two short edges. Then go ahead and flip it right side out and you can use scissors to poke that corner out. Now we're gonna go ahead and stitch as close as we can to the edge so that way those two sides stay together when we're attaching it to the crown. So you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and line up the edges and we're gonna place that roll on the inside right on that size strip and sew all the way around. And try to keep this even going all the way around so that way it's not all wonky when you roll it up. Watch this. Oh, hallelujah. 
now we're going to be attaching the sweatband. This step, we made our own attachment and we made this out of heavier stock paper. All you have to do is make a little sleeve that your sweatband fits in there nice and snug and then go ahead and tape that onto your sewing machine. It serves as a guide so that way the sweatband doesn't slide all around while you're sewing it onto the crown. And now listen to this. Now with your sweatband guide in position, all you have to do is follow that same stitch when you're attaching the roll. And you don't have to be exactly on that stitch, but as long as you're on the side strip, you should be totally fine. And there you have it, your sweatband is perfectly installed in the roll and it looks nice and clean and professional. And now we're going to be adding on a plastic snap to the back for a closure. You can literally add whatever you want onto the back. Cap Supply Co. has a huge variety of different components you can add for closures. So go ahead and roll that sweatband over towards the inside and sandwich that plastic component in between and just sew that right on. And it is really just that simple and go ahead and do this for the other side. I do recommend using a heavier weight needle for this process because you are sewing through a decent amount of material. And now we're going to do a little tack stitch right on the corner to hold the roll into position. And you have to just do this for both sides. And this will help keep that roll into position and not flop down on you. And the last step is adding vents and we're going to be using eyelets so go ahead mark make holes put them in and use a plier or press to install those eyelets and in the description we have what we're using if you want to use this tool you can totally use pliers it totally is up to you and what you have available and there you have it your five panel roll cap is complete Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment, let us know what you think. And if you have any other ideas that you want to see us do, definitely send them our way and we'll try to make that happen for you. But until then, we're going to keep the videos coming at you. So we'll see you next time. Good evening, everybody.